great to have you back um all right regression so session two we do regression okay given square meters what should be the price of the apartment so we are finding a continuous value not a category so regression let's go so we create a new test can regression simple we're going to do a more complex one later so the simple one is already well it's simple and not so simple so we have to do this cleanup again this one Test and regression. So let's create, let, we make up some data here because we're creative, okay? We're creative thinkers. Okay, okay. No jokes. No price is what we try to find. And we're adding um, space. Let's say space of one gives the price of 10. Zoop. Let's get some data. This it looks like much, but it's very little actually. Uh, da, 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 da. Come on. Now we create a sequence here. And what we actually do as well. Like one square meter. Probably not, right? Maybe we start with 10. And actually 10 is too little too, no? We it doesn't need to be exactly like this. We can just add a zero. You have 10. Maybe let's do like another sequence here, a little one. Just below a hundred. Come on. You see, there's a gap it's because it can have gaps, okay? There's no need for it to be perfect. So we're creating this sequence again. And we're doing this as sequence. I could just instead like that. And we add a zero at the end, right? Because that's the idea. The price is it's not one dollar per square meter. Okay, these are made up numbers anyway, but so you get the idea. So ten square meters is a hundred. Hundred and ten is, is just one zero more. So let's train it. Okay, what is it? Let's report. Okay, come on. Data. What do we need to add? We need to tell them we're actually looking, we're trying to predict the price. We want to learn with the price. So, and what is that? Yes, you know, can regression. Okay, now we get this beautiful report you can see is different than the classification error because these are continuous values we can actually give you better info i hope the microphone picks up my voice yeah it does okay so the mean absolute the two things that i i consider important are mean absolute error and r squared so mean absolute error gives you the error in so the average error that you have given space how wrong are you? And this says like 82. So like, or let's say 80. So like it would predict here in average 920 or right, two, 2080, something like that. Okay. So that's the mean absolute error. So that's helpful because it gives you an idea how, how bad your model is. Then we have the R squared. Like what it means, what is the problem? Like how far off are you? The R squared is giving you like the error in percent. So this is pretty much 99%. So it's 
So, so it seems to fit very well. I'm not so sure about that. So let's predict. Let's um, give them predict me data. Let's just give, give them a few and see how wrong they are. Because the mean absolute error doesn't mean that there's, there cannot be error that is a lot higher than what we would expect. Predict PM. Oh, screen samples with exactly one dimension, seven given high. You're correct. Okay, it needs to be like that. Four dimension for I didn't do this on purpose, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah 420 quick club let's go <laughs> i had no idea that it's gonna give these results um let's use some different values just to see so we see it's fairly far off a lot more than 80. 110 110 is off by 110. 120 is only off by 20. 130 is off by 160. Yeah, so I think this is because of the algorithm, the default algorithm that we choose. So it's putting these together. It's just saying like, yeah, whatever, you're like all together. The thing is, if we would increase the number of samples, we would get a lot better results. Because these are just so few samples, yeah? These are like 41 to 15, yeah? It's, it's like um, 25 samples or something like that. So that's very little. And we train only against 70% of the sample size. How do I know this? Let's make some new lines here. So there's a thing when we train, which is called train part size. This is set to 0 0.7. To start with, let's set this higher. So we take actually more samples. The train part size means we use the data to train. So 70% of this data that gets shuffled is used to train. And the 30% is used to validate how good you are. Okay, we increase the sample size to 95%. The train size, excuse me. So let's run this again. Run it again because it shuffles, it gives you different results. Yeah, the bigger the sample size, the less you're gonna see things like that. Okay, and it's still well, it's better now. No, 130. It still looks like the algorithm put these together. So maybe we're not so happy with this. We could we probably are like it's okay you can use it it's usable especially if you would add like 10 times more data not only 25 but is there another thing we can do yes there is namely we can use another estimator algorithm use estimator algorithm which one to figure out a different one, we go to this beautiful documentation, click on choosing an estimator. If we're in regressors, what I want to use is Ridge, which is linear regression. Yeah, or you can use it as well for polynomial regression. So let's use that. So let's, let's quickly screenshot this so we don't forget what we actually had. So this wasn't so bad, in my opinion. I'll move this over. And now we use the ridge. New ridge. Import it. And we use the default setting. And it's not going to be so good, but I right, close the terminal. <clears throat> OK. 
tests init can regression simple. Da -da -da -da. Do we predict at all? Ah, yeah, these are our predictions. It just looks a lot smaller. Because I. Oh, no. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Give me a second. Okay. So, this gives us different results. But it's. I think it's worse. Yeah, if compared to this one. The old one. You can see it's worse. It's not. Well, this one is. Yeah, it's still worse. Definitely worse. Ah, actually, this one might be better. What can we do better? The thing is, Ridge does use. I should go here. It uses a hyperparameters, hyperparameter, which is alpha, which is. I don't want to go into detail too much, but it's. You want to have it as small as possible. And as big as convenient, okay. The bigger it is, the slower it, no, the smaller it is, the longer it takes to, um, to calculate the, the result. And the bigger it is, the faster it finds a result, but the less quality is the result. At least you can, you can say that simplified, yeah? So let's, I made it smaller and we can see now, oh, that's very close. Remember, it's a factor 10. It's 110, 1001. So we're off by very little here. Yeah, not even, maybe I can make it even smaller. Let's see. And now it's almost perfect. Yeah, if you reduce the alpha, it's getting almost perfect. There's, you should study about how to use the hyperparameters, but that's <laughs> what I can tell you about this. I don't want to go too deep into this because it takes so long. Yeah. Whereas if it's one, you know, if, if you have a big data set, a lot bigger than this, the value, a higher value is, is helping you to, that it calculates the results faster. Um, what can we, can we actually predict? Let's see. Let's do a prediction. Uh, no, we actually, actually already did this. I wanted to predict a new value. Because the good thing is, obviously, you can predict things that don't ex exist yet. So let's say we have... Let's see what it gives to us. Which is exactly what we want. Yeah, you can predict new prices given old data. Okay, so that was fairly easy too. The only thing is, like, to make it a lot better, you can add a lot more data, or you can try to use a new algorithm that can help sometimes too. And to help choose one, you go to this and read here and try. I mean, into user guide, and choosing an estimator. That's it. Yo.